coming. Um, we have a, a great group of good government groups, fiscal watchdogs, and progressive organizations here today. We're very concerned about the fact that um, we want to move some economic development reforms, some transparency reforms that are long overdue, something that we've been pushing for a long time, uh, proposals that have been floating around for a long time. Uh, but we were encouraged just a couple of weeks ago to see the Senate actually pass both the um, Comptroller's Procurement Integrity Act and the Database of Deals, two measures that, which we believe are long overdue. They're common sense measures that would increase transparency and accountability around economic development programs. And as you all know, there's a lot of controversy swirling around economic development programs lately, everything from uh, indictments to convictions. We have Elaine Kalieros' trial coming up uh, in the next few weeks. Um, we've had lackluster reports from ESD on the program's uh, successes, uh, audits that have shown that these programs aren't doing what they're designed to do, not creating the number of jobs they're supposed to create. So now we have an opportunity to really move this. So the Senate, two and a half weeks ago or so, passed these in a, an immense bipartisan fashion. Uh, 62 to 0 and 60 to 2 for both of these bills. Uh, and, you know, that obviously shows that there's broad bipartisan support for measures like this. Now we need the Assembly um, to move these bills. Um, so we're calling here today, calling on Speaker Heasty uh, to take these bills up in his house and to move them forward and present them to the governor. So, you know, to use a bad sports analogy, um, I like to think of the, the Comptroller's Procurement Integrity Act bill as like adding a referee to a football game. And the, um, the other bill, the database of deals, is more like uh, looking at a slow motion instant replay, right? Where you're able to actually see what's going on and what the situation is. So these are just two very basic bills that we need to pass. They're common sense legislation. So I'd like to introduce a few of our speakers here today, people who have been working on this for a long time. Uh, we've been incredibly frustrated by the process thus far, uh, but we're hoping that with the remaining days of session we can move some of these bills. So let me bring up John Caney from reInvent Albany, who's been working on this uh, just as long as we have. So. Hi, it's John Caney from reInvent Albany. And I, what's new about this, what's different than last year or the year before when we started working on this? A couple of things. One, we're going to hear from a much more diverse group of supporters and stakeholders. This is a memorandum of support we're sharing today right here. And as you can see on it, it has a major labor union on it, which is a first for a public supporter of this bill. We have progressive groups. We have business-backed groups. We have traditional good government watchdog groups, and we have budget watchdog groups. So this is a much bigger, broader coalition of public stakeholders pushing for a database of deals and the Comptroller's Procurement Integrity Act. And why are we doing that? Because they're simple and they're common sense, and they, the state's $4 billion year in economic development spending badly needs a dose of sunshine and simple accountability, and these bills add that to the equation. We're coming off of the biggest bid rigging scandal in state history, that Elaine Cagliaro's trial starts next month, and what our groups are looking for is basic fairness and transparency in how state economic development contracts are given out, and to ensure that everyone is treated fairly when they apply for that uh, state support, including taxpayers and including MWB applicants and the whole broad range of the public. So this is about presenting a memorandum of support today that calls on Speaker Hasty to allow these bills to come to a vote like they did in the Senate, because we know if they come to a vote in the Assembly, they will pass overwhelmingly, because these are common sense measures. There's nothing complicated about them other than helping taxpayers, helping the public see what their money is going towards. Next is Jess Wisniewski from Citizen Action of New York. Well, you guys are being really nice. <laughs> because this makes me and a lot of the folks in our membership uh, incredibly angry. In fact, I'd go so far as to say any assembly member who leaves this building this year without voting through this set of reforms should be ashamed of themselves, and voters should hold them to task come re-election year. What could this possibly show? I think any New Yorker with a brain will know it will show the legal bribery and quid pro quo that we see over and over again in this state and that New Yorkers feel in their gut about this state government, but will prove it 
in in black and white in the in the in the um, the dotting of the I's and the crossing of the T's that these bills would allow to uh, be forthcoming and expose. And so um, for us, this is about making sure the wealthy and well-connected are not the ones getting the deals always, and that people, that equity and sunshine are a part of this process in New York State. Um, you know, I'm, I'm mindful as I stand here of the Times article a few weeks ago that reminded us how appointments sometimes get made by Governor Cuomo uh, uh, by bringing in major campaign donors into state government. It's those kinds of questions that come up when the database of deals could somehow show us some sunlight. Um, so it's time for New Yorkers uh, to really see and that any member of the state legislature with integrity must demand a vote on this issue and pass it before the end of legislative session. All right, thank you, Jeff. Next, we hear from Jasmine Gripper from the Alliance for Quality Education. Thank you. I'm here because education advocates always care about our tax dollars are being spent. Year after year, we come to Albany asking for more money for our schools, and the governor consistently says there's not enough money to go around, yet we see fraud, waste, and abuse to make development packages. Uh, just this past budget, he pushed for accountability at school district levels who already have locally elected school boards, who have their vo local budgets voted on by the population, and he still wants them to show exactly how those dollars are being spent and report it to the state. We want that same transparency to come from Governor Cuomo. We want him to take his own advice and show us how the money's being spent. He should be championing this issue if he truly cares about transparency in Albany. Thank you. Thank you, Jasmine. Now, Ethan Geringer Samet from Citizens Union. Hi, um, I'm Ethan Geringer Samet from Citizens Union. Um, the database of deals is a relatively modest proposal to inject. Uh, a, a good measure of transparency into the procurement process. That together with the Comptroller's procurement integrity, um, uh, sorry, the Comptroller's uh, Procurement Integrity Act um, would help restore public confidence in the, the government procurement process, um, especially related to economic development. There's a lot of opacity in the state budget and New Yorkers are demanding more clarity in that process. Um, these have a lot of support. The Senate has passed it. The Assembly included it in the One House Budget Bill. Um, last year, uh, Speaker Heastie, speaking about this, said, the people of the state of New York will still feel better knowing that there's some other entity looking at it, like the state comptroller. Another set of eyes will make people feel better that, yes, things are done correctly, end quote. So hopefully, he still feels that way and the assembly will pass it this session. Thank you. After eight public officials have either left office or been convicted of corruption in the last six months. Six months, eight people have either going to be going to jail or have just left office altogether because of this. This is two very, very basic reforms to have tra more transparency in government, to have a more open government, and there is absolutely no reason that the assembly should not take these bills up. We want to see these bills come to the floor, we want to see them passed, and we want to see them signed by the governor before this year ends. Thanks. Thank you. Now I hear from Russ Haven from Niper. Um, um, the Assembly has long led the way to reforms of election law, campaign finance law, and government accountability. Unfortunately, only infrequently has it had a willing partner in the State Senate. In the waning days of the 2018 legislative session, when government transparency and economic development spending transparency are top concerns for New Yorkers, the Assembly has an opportunity to advance the ball substantially in areas in which it's led the way. We urge to finish the job by passing these two bills and sending them to the governor. And in keeping with the, the uh, sports metaphors for this morning, uh, in light of the NBA Finals, this would be the equivalent of a layup, uh, and if you're a Stanley Cup fan, it would be an empty netter once it gets to the floor. Thank you. Development spending and an accurate assessment of whether we're spending that money effectively. This is basic good policy. And you could take it with or without the trash talking and the politics. The Republicans were against this before they were for it. The Democrats were for it before they started dragging their heels on it. Both 
there's all kinds of hay to make over the politics and the problems and the corruption. But right now, the people of New York deserve basic policies to let them know what's going on and whether it's working. That's what this is about. That's why the Strong Economy for All Coalition is supporting these bills. All right. Well, thank you. you know, in my opinion, I, I think, you know, we've seen this be part of the budget negotiations during this year where um, the database of deals certainly was in both one houses. Um, there's no reason it shouldn't have passed. But quite frankly, the governor is the one that's knocking this off the table. It seems that the governor wants transparency and accountability when it comes to everyone else but himself. What will we be watching the Kelly Rose trial? Because I know that you guys, you know, yeah, we, closely monitoring sure. the last I mean, one you were there just about every day look, the, to comment on it. Regardless of how the trial ends up and whether it ends up in a conviction or acquittal, what we'll be looking for is the evidence that's already been introduced in the public record, getting a broader public hearing, and what it's going to show is insider dealing and bid rigging, and whether that's considered legal or illegal, we're going to, but already we see email transcripts and conversations between the government and SUNY and the big contractors at LP Simonelli, in which functionally they talk about rigging the contract to their benefit, and the contracts here are enormous. Uh, $750 million for one plant at Riverbend, which is now the Tesla solar uh, plant and another 300 million roughly for other projects in Buffalo that are tainted. And this, so what this trial will show us is um, a lot about how the current economic development projects are uh, secret, shady, not necessarily well thought out, and it's, gonna, it's not going to be a pretty picture. Right. I, I would also say, you know, these mega deals that are happening all around the state uh, where we're doing everything from, you know, buy, uh, building uh, buildings for private companies, you know, uh, the, the contracts uh, and the negotiations and whatnot, uh, uh, you know, uh, are, are shrouded in secrecy when you compare it to something like a nonprofit contract, where a nonprofit gets $50,000 to perform a public service. They have far more reporting requirements than a billion dollar project. Um, that's supposed to create jobs in our community. We know nonprofits are creating jobs. We don't know if a lot of these economic development programs are creating jobs. What's really important here, too, that hasn't been emphasized enough is that there's a real opportunity cost to spending on these business subsidy deals. I'm very glad that Jasmine was here today to talk about um, education and the fact that some of this funding could be going to schools and likewise it could go to clean water programs and likewise to bridges and roads and other public infrastructure. So this is not free money. This is money that costs the public in other ways and that's a very important thing to consider. Any other questions? Statements? Comments? <laughs> observations? No? Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you all for coming. Appreciate it.